Hi, I'm Jonathan McHugh. Thanks Arts Iowa City for having me and thank you all for watching. Today I'm going to be breaking down my artwork into these three main categories of people, places, and concepts. And for a little bit of background about me, I grew up in Colorado and so I have been making art since I was really young. My dad's an artist and my brothers are artists. And I grew up hanging out in the mountains a lot, going backpacking, fly fishing, hiking around. And you'll see that come out in a lot of my landscape work, especially. I went to Colorado State University and graduated in 2016 with a degree in art education. And so I taught high school art for a few years. And then my lovely wife, Hannah, got into the uh, physician assistant program at the University of Iowa here. And so that's what brought us out to Iowa City a little over a year ago. All right, so for people here, I consider myself mostly a painter, but I have a strong drawing foundation behind all of my paintings. And so it's important to me to practice my technical skills and be fluent with my artistic um, accuracy and realism. So I try to have a broad range of skills where I can choose to be technically accurate when I need to, to convey my ideas. And I can also build more abstract textures and parts of paintings that you'll see later on in the conceptual section here. So here's a few examples of building those drawing skills with that Belvedere torso on the left. Uh, these four on the right are drawings I did from life with the group here in Iowa City that's uh, through the Artifactory. And three of those are 20 minute drawings. And then the top center red Conte one is a 40 minute drawing. I really enjoy the challenge of trying to capture what a person looks like in a limited time. It's super hard, but I'm always learning something new. This is an example from some live Zoom studies that I was doing before people could meet in person again. So this was this spring. Um, and you can see my process here. I just start really simple, get the basic layout of the painting down first and proportion. And then I make sure I'm building on a good structure when I start putting in the basic lights and darks and colors. And then I just refine each area from there to end up with the final product. This was about a three hour painting here. There's a couple more studies. I did these in person of a couple of friends of ours in Iowa City. And uh, every time I try to make a portrait or a landscape, I think to myself, how can I make this have some valuable quality that's unique to oil painting? So why am I doing this rather than just taking a photo of the person? And I think there's something that painting can capture that is unique to oil paint, where you get this sense of being there with the person or being in that landscape, where there's this vibrancy and texture to it, and some areas are more smooth or blurred out, and then others are more precise, that I think is unique to this medium. And so I'm always striving to capture that. I look up to artists such as John Singer Sargent or Winslow Homer, or Soroya or other people who really can capture that balance of being realistic and detailed and yet still being loose and spontaneous and feeling like they're capturing a moment really well. So I tried to do that on these two paintings. Um, they're both based on photo references. The one on the left is a friend of mine who's a tattoo artist, obviously, Austin here. And then the one on the right is of Hannah, my wife. And I try to vary the looseness of the brush strokes and um, to try and make it more immersive and make the viewer feel like they're there with the person a little more than you could with just like cold hard realism in every single part of the painting. There's another painting of mine that's fairly recent. This is a self-portrait. The photo I took through several glasses and bottles to have some areas that are more abstract and really make the viewer think and try to figure out what's going on in the scene. Um, and just be a little bit more emotionally engaging than having a simple portrait of just my face. So all of these places that I paint are based on photos or plein air, like on location paint studies of places that I've been before. Growing up in Colorado, I was lucky enough to have access to a lot of really just gorgeous mountain scenes. So both of these are based on uh, trips that I took within Colorado. And again, I have a lot of the same ideas going through my head while I paint these. How can I convey the beauty and the color and the emotion behind being in these gorgeous, awe-inspiring places? 
more than I could by just getting every detail accurate in a photo. And so I try to vary how much detail is in certain areas or layer a lot of textures or I give more vibrancy to certain colors to help the viewer step into that scene a little more. It's another painting from a scene in Colorado. I do have a lot of technical focus and it is important to me to have some realism behind my paintings. And oftentimes I just try to make something that looks beautiful. I think that that's undervalued in today's sort of snobby, academic, contemporary art scene where it's, it can be frowned upon a lot to make something that's just beautiful for its own sake. But to me, that's important. I, I think that there's something valuable in creating a new work of art that didn't exist before that brings a little bit of joy or emotional quality to someone's life. These cityscapes are also from trips I've been on. The left one is in Chicago, and then the two on the right are from New York. And they look very detailed on a small screen, but when you see them up close, especially the larger pieces on the right, uh, they have a lot of texture and looseness and layering of paint that gives them some vibrancy and some life beyond what you'd have if they were all really smooth and, and precisely rendered. These two paintings as well, uh, the left one's from a trip to Singapore and Malaysia that I went on a few years back and just trying to get the feel of those waves rolling in. And the one on the right is from the Moab area of Utah. And I was uh, honored to have this piece featured in Southwest Art Magazine a couple months back, along with some other artists that were under the age of 30. So um, hopefully I can have a few more years to get work into that category here. All right, so my more conceptual work, this is where I try to get ideas across a little more and not just paint scenes or people for the practice or just to have a beautiful product, but express some of the things that are important to me philosophically. I read a lot of philosophy and I'm just super interested in learning about psychology and uh, evolution and neuroscience and just why we have consciousness and what it's like to be a human and why. And that's really broad and really hard to convey through art. So what I try to do then is just narrow in on one little facet of the human experience. And so what I mean by that is how can I capture one scene or angle of what it's like to be a person in a really broad sense through an oil painting in a way that you can't capture through other media um, or other experiences in life. And so I have a lot of surreal influence in this type of work. Uh, in high school, especially, I was influenced by Dali and Magritte and De Chirico and some other uh, well-known surrealists. And so in this earlier series from a couple years back now, I have more clear-cut symbols that are just combined in different ways to make the viewer um, ponder a certain concept. The first one on the left is based on Nietzsche's idea of three metamorphoses where he explores these stages that a person can go through symbolized by the camel as a more low kind of simple stage, the lion as a more independent intermediate stage of rebellion, and then the child as the final ultimate goal of transcendence and being able to view the world with a sense of wonder. Uh, the middle piece is based more on my own kind of conflict and transition grappling with whether or not there's an afterlife. And so symbolizing this spirit ascending and, but also being taken apart or broken down into these different abstract shapes. And then the third piece is more about someone reconciling with the emptiness and uh, being at peace with the emptiness after life and the, the fact that there is no afterlife. So on the left, you have all the complexity of memories and experiences uh, and then on the right that dissolves and fades out, uh, but it still has that sense of beauty and peace about it. However, more recently, I've been moving into using less symbols to get my ideas across. And instead of illustrating concepts like the philosophy behind the three metamorphoses or being really clearly like, yeah, this is the end of someone's life, um, I'm trying to leave it more open-ended for the viewer and just explore a general idea or pose some questions, but not 
give them the answers to it all the time. And so in this piece, my focus or my ideas behind it was centered around the physicality of humans and how consciousness emerges materially just from all these incredibly complex networks of neurons in the brain. And, um, but also what that means as far as when, when life ends, that just decomposes and doesn't exist anymore. But I, I don't want it to be so direct that it slams the viewer in the face with like, this is what I think, or this is why my art tells you what to believe. Uh, I, I just try to pose some questions and get people thinking about life a little differently. In this piece, I was trying to capture the feeling of being immersed in a really powerful piece of music. Um, I play a few different instruments and write some music and it's my main second creative outlet along with art. And so there's something powerful about that to me where I lose my sense of self and I am only thinking about how the music was made or what it, emotions it evokes in me that dissolves kind of my own um, boundaries around who I am or what I'm experiencing at the time. So I tried to symbolize that with all these layers and these broken boundaries around the figure and um, experimenting with different colors in this piece. So I have some process shots on this one to show you how I'm building those layers. Um, I'm, I think being a person has this weird baggage of millions and millions of really short experiences or interactions or thoughts that just go through our head over and over every day of our lives that add up to create a unique individual and make us ourselves. But some of those patterns or experiences or thoughts dissolve and we don't even know that they're happening. And then other ones stay more clear and, and we can precisely recall certain memories better than others or we have these defining attributes about who we are that really stand out while other ones fade away. And so I try to show that a little bit with the variation of textures in my paintings, building them up, blurring some areas out more, um, putting them behind translucent layers so they feel farther away. And then I have other more clear cut kind of windows and doorways into certain scenes to get those precise memories across um, in, in my artwork here. With this piece, I have really similar ideas going on. I wanted to show a bunch of different faces at different angles, some more hidden than others, and then other silhouette-like shapes throughout the painting to convey this, that sense of how the self changes over time and how transient um, myself is when I look back on who I was a couple years ago versus 10 years ago or 20 years ago um, and as a little kid how that was me viewing the world through the same eyes. And yet I, there's so much that I can't even connect with or relate to about that person uh, anymore. I have other natural textures and symbols throughout this painting as well. Um, I think that there's something about the complexity of waves or clouds or um, plant life visually that really serves that idea well and it conveys the uh, just that complexity of what it's like to be a person inside your own head all the time in a way that not many other symbols can for me. With this piece, I was trying to get at, as a younger person, that sense of, of heat and the impending warming of the, the planet here and how over the next few generations, there's so much irreversible damage that's been done um, that we're always aware of to some level, and yet we can't avoid um, encountering the results of that. And so I have this complicated kind of feeling of overcrowded but semi-abstract people along the bottom here, and these wells of blue symbolizing the sort of running out of resources that we sense, you know, that we feel like are permanent or always going to be part of our world. Um, even though I'm dealing with a, some fairly weighted concepts here with climate change and the disasters that are going to unfold from that, I still try to do it in a way that's visually appealing and aesthetically beautiful. And 
that's a consistent theme through all my work. I, I just think that making artwork that has really harsh shock value or really kind of grotesque emotional impacts definitely has its place. But for me, that pushes me away from art and I find less willingness to engage with dark artwork because at least in, in my experience, there's plenty of other dark things that I have to deal with every day <laughs> in my own life or in the news uh, or around me. And I have ways of dealing with that, but art is more of a refuge for me to find some beauty in the world, even if I'm trying to explore harder concepts or more intimidating ideas. Um, I want it to be approachable and immersive and a place that a viewer wants to engage with longer term and isn't just pushed away from. So along those lines, uh, this piece has some similar kind of ideas behind it, but it's more so about the relationship between two people and how interesting it is to me that over a long time, you build these connections and these uh, branches between another person's mind and yours, where you can learn more and more to see the world through their point of view. And yet, no matter how well you know someone, there's always going to be a separateness and a sense of isolation where I'm always viewing the world from inside of this head and through these eyes, and I can only talk through this mouth. And it, I'm still always going to be me and, and isolated in some way, but um, that, that branching out and developing over a long term a meaningful connection with another person is what I was trying to get across in this painting through the symbolism of, of the plant growth and these different textures here. There's a couple of close-up pictures from that painting um, to give you a better idea of how I'm using oil paint. As it's still wet, I'm blending those areas together and getting softer textures. And then I'll let it dry in between layers and then get really, really precise lines like these orange outlines and stuff. Um, by putting those on top of dry paint. This piece I kept really light and ethereal and intangible. I'm exploring a lot of themes around memory and time here as well, um, and how just how quickly that evaporates and how weightless uh, our own experiences and memories are. I have this almost a uh, godlike figure here traveling through these uh, at a broad scale, these cloud like textures and with these birds flying around to try and get across um, the, the symbolism of time passing by and this adult with the paper airplane in hand being a relic of childhood that this person cannot really hold on to anymore. Um, and just how they're dissolving and the head is kind of dissipating into the background, um, I think is, is showing how vague and intangible um, our own sense of experiences and memories can be. In this piece, I have a close up on the left and right, and then the center here is just gonna be some quick process videos, and then I'll show you the whole piece at the end here. Um, it's based on a photo reference of my twin brother, Matthew and I, and we're really close and we grew up obviously in the same house and going to the same schools and having a lot of the same friends and experiences. And so um, I wanted to show that sense of nostalgia and that sense of these echoes of shared experiences with each other. So here's the final painting. Um, but I still use a realistic enough technique that uh, it looks like the two of us and it's based on a place that we've been before. And yet I have those dissolving kind of light yellow and white areas behind us to try to hint at those echoes of all the past that we share and what it feels like to have a relationship that's grown and changed over many, many years in that way. And that's the most recent painting that I've finished here. So you'll notice maybe that most of these that we've been through are from 2021 and the few are from the year or two before that, but I paint all the time and I love it. And I'm still, uh, I'm 27 years old. So I'm hoping to have many more chances to get better at painting. And I'm excited to see where these go. So thank you so much for watching and learning a little bit about what I do and where I'm coming from. 
um, here's my website and I have a couple different Instagram accounts, ones for the landscapes and ones for the more figurative and conceptual work. So I appreciate you watching. Thanks so much.